I'm Dr. Jim Brooks, and I've taught English and Latin and journalism at West Brooks High School for the past 38 years. I think I always thought that I wanted to be a teacher. I was always the kid who people wanted to help them with their homework, or I taught my younger brother and sister. The kids in the neighborhood would play school, and I would be the teacher. As, as nerdy as all that sounds, but I think from the very beginning, I, I felt like I wanted to teach. I didn't always know what I wanted to teach. In fact, I started uh, college at Appalachian as a music major and had planned to teach music, either band or chorus, but about a semester or two into that music major, I decided to minor in music and to get my major in English because I found myself taking more and more English classes. And so I think I've enjoyed teaching English primarily because it's given me the opportunity to do music than just for fun outside of school. So when I was in high school, I took French for my foreign language. It was the only foreign language offered at Beaver Creek High School. And I didn't feel like after I'd taken high school French that I was prepared for college French. I was a little nervous about what the expectations might be at the at the college level for what I should know and be able to to say and be able to understand what I when I hear French spoken. So there were friends on, on my honors hall who were who were taking Latin and, and encouraged me to take Latin. They had, had Latin offered in their high school and so they they talked me into that and a lot of their pitch for that was you don't have to take the, the lab part of the foreign language that the modern conversational languages had to take because they had to go to a listening lab and, and, and do a lot of extra work with listening. When in Latin, we're simply translating uh, the written word. And so that sounded interesting to me and I tried it and, and really did enjoy it. Although the class was full of people who had had Latin before, so the professor, who was a former nun, she moved very quickly, um, but, but after taking um, the classes for my foreign language requirement in college, I, I took some extra courses, some uh, upper level courses, and then when I interviewed for the job here at West Wilkes, I was replacing an English teacher who also taught Latin. And so they saw Latin on my transcript and said, you know, if you took about two more classes, you'd be certified to teach Latin. And so I did go back to school and take those extra classes, and I'm glad that I did because I've enjoyed teaching Latin. So, while I was teaching here at West Wilkes, I worked part-time on my master's degree, and my master's degree was in English and education, and so my courses were mostly in the summer, um, and I, I took a long time. You, you, can, you can take several years to work on those degrees part-time, and I enjoyed being in school, so I continued to take courses and work on my master's degree. And after that, I got my doctorate degree, and again, I, I love being a part of an academic community, and so I stretched that process out for a while too. So, in many ways, it feels like I've just I've always been in school, you know, as a student, and then now as a teacher, and then continuing my education with the masters and the doctorate. So sometimes people wonder, with a with a doctorate degree, why I'm not teaching at a university because most of the professors at universities hold doctorate degrees, but but I'm was very much content, you know, in continuing to teach at the high school level and to continue teaching here at West Wilkes. I've had the opportunity over the years to to be in a lot of different schools and I haven't found one that I would, would rather be in, so I've continued to, to be here. And I think having a doctorate kind of gives me some opportunities to to maybe do some other things, but some of those other things are not as attractive as, as you might think. College professors don't make as much money as you think they would. And they only work nine months a year, and high school teachers are 10-month employees, so there would be a, a one month less employment. So, although you don't hear you know, too many high school teachers with doctorate degrees, I, I just think it's, it's, it's really just an indication that I, I, I love being in school and, and just wanted to challenge myself with another degree. When I was in college, when I was planning to be a teacher, Many of my friends were going into business or going into other fields that at the time probably were going to yield a, a much higher income. 
and and with that maybe you know would come some opportunities for travel and that kind of thing but what I quickly found out in education there are also opportunities for those kinds of things as well I've had I've been fortunate over many summers uh, when school is out to become a part of a program here or there that would allow me to travel and so I spent a summer in Italy I spent a summer in the Republic of Georgia teaching English. I spent time in Japan and in Australia. And so um, I've just, I found that there were opportunities to do some of those things that some of my college classmates didn't think that, you know, a teacher you know, would be able to do. And so to so always tell people who are going to be, become teachers that, you know, you, you may not make as much money as people in other fields, but if you're, if you're really happy with what you're doing, there will be opportunities to, to do those things. One story that I think kind of encapsulates my, my desire to teach and, and maybe what keeps me teaching and a story that I've come back to over the years has been one, I guess it, it happened about the second year that I was teaching. I was driving home from Appalachian late one night. I'd been to the library studying. I was taking a course uh, one of the first courses for my master's degree and I was coming down Boone Trail I got into to the foot of the mountain there at Lewis Fork Church and I, and I got onto Boone Trail and I was only a mile or so down the road when I had a flat tire and it was probably about midnight there, there were um, no houses around the only light was like a full moon that was out that night and I pulled off the road and got out of the car to assess you know the damage this was way before cell phones so I couldn't just uh, give someone a call but as I was looking at the flat tire and trying to figure out what to do this old man came out of the woods and he said you got a flat and I said yeah I think I do and uh, I was a little nervous that someone was out there in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the night but I got the jack out of the trunk and he's jacking up the the car and taking off the, the flat tire while I'm getting the spare tire out of the trunk. and I'm nervously talking the whole time, you know, telling him that I'm a teacher down the road at West Wilkes. I wanted him to know that if, that if I turned up missing or dead, somebody would be looking for me. It all seemed to go very fast and he handed me the flat tire to put into the trunk and as I closed the trunk, he had finished up and he was walking away and he was walking back toward the, the woods and I called after him and I said how can I repay you and he turned there from the edge of the woods and he said teach good things and then he walked away into the shadows and so over my career that's kind of become my mantra teach good things and I've remembered that you know all these years I think it's it says a lot about you know what I hope to be as a teacher and what I try to be as a teacher and I try to, to keep that in mind each day.